All right, they're going to go have them a good time. We're going to have us a good time, amen? All right. Oh, they're starting their good time early. Yes, sir. I can tell you, I enjoy June Church. My Sunday service uh, is uh, the third Sunday. We always have a good time. Always enjoy. You can be as crazy as you want, and they love it. The crazier you are, the better it is. Amen? And uh, so sometimes you got to, like, you know, restrain some of that craziness for you guys. Oh, you, at least you older guys. Amen? And, uh, but we can have a good time and, uh, back there, and I love it. I enjoy it. I've been, been doing it for a long time, and I never get tired of it. And I just thank the Lord for it. I thank the Lord for, uh, for all the kids that we have here in this church. And uh, all the kids that we have seen grow up. It's amazing how fast, how fast they grow. And uh, my goodness, you see them and they're young, they're in junior church, and it just boom, boom, boom. I mean, just, just like that. And they're, they're grown and gone. And uh, it's amazing. I'm glad to have a part in their life, uh, to see them grow. And, and uh, now uh, many of them are married and uh, kids. And look back there at Craig, you know. And, and uh, man, I'm telling you what, they, they boom, 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 man. And I uh, got, got, got one, got one on the way. And, uh, and so anyway, I said, Brother Craig, you, you, you do have a TV, right? And uh, he said, I do. I said, well, you, you need to figure this thing out, buddy. And uh, so, uh, but anyways, are you in Matthew chapter 6? All right, Matthew chapter 6. Am I too loud? Am I good out there? Is everybody good? good. All right, good, good. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to start reading in verse number 5, right on down to verse number 15. And in verse number 5, the Bible says, And when thou, and when thou hast pray, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard of their much speaking." Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask Him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Everybody can say amen right there. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Can we look back in verse number 9 and can we read this prayer together? Are you ready? After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity to be able to pray. Lord, thank you that you are a great teacher. You've taught us all things. And Lord, I pray you'll teach us now tonight. I pray you'd strengthen us. Lord, I pray that you would help us, Lord, to hear from you. God, I pray your blessings on this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever been at the place where you're not really sure what to pray? How to pray? Brother Tim, I saw you take your jacket off earlier. Amen. Is that okay? It's hot. Have you ever been to that place where you're just not sure how, you know, what to pray or how to pray? Um, I want to talk to you tonight about how to pray when you're not sure how to pray. What to pray when you're not really sure. I've been confused on how to pray lately. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, maybe there's some times that you look at the television or you look at the news and you're just not sure what to pray. How to pray. What should I say? How should I feel? You know, and the elections have kind of brought me to that place. Some social issues have brought me to that place. Maybe some fears of the future have brought me to that place where 
I start to pray, and to be honest with you, the problems prohibit me from continuing to pray. I start praying, and, I, and I'm going to be honest with you. Can I be honest, yeah. transparent? Amen. I start praying, and I say, Lord, I pray about this certain situation. I don't want to get very specific, but Lord, I pray about this certain situation. And you know the situation, and I'm talking to the Lord about it. Amen. And I stop praying because I keep thinking about the situation. Right. And it kind of takes me to a different place. Where I'm, I'm no longer speaking to the Lord, but I'm thinking about this situation, this guy, or whatever we're facing in my, in, in, in my life or in our lives in our country. Have you ever been there? Yes. I'm, I'm, I can get there really quick. And I'm glad that the Lord teaches us how to pray when we don't know how to pray. You know, a lot of people will say this is the Lord's Prayer, but we know it's not the Lord's Prayer. Because the Lord, the Bible says here, it says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And we know the Lord had no debts. That he had no sin. So it's not the Lord's prayer. It may be a model prayer. It may be the disciples' prayer. It may be our prayer. The Christian prayer. But he starts out just like he starts out the Ten Commandments. He starts out with a focus on God and he moves it to man. And in our prayer here that he teaches us, he starts out the same way. The focus is always to be on God. He starts out, Our Father. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The focus is on the Lord. The focus is on the Lord, and then it moves to man. Whenever we pray, and we're not sure how to pray, can I encourage you, focus on the Lord. Let's get our focus off of whatever is happening out here and get our focus up on what's happening there. I love the simplicity of this prayer. It's not the words of the prayer, but it's the spirit of the prayer. It's not the words that we say, but it's the spirit in which we say them. It's not the length of our prayer, but the strength of our prayer. It's a very short prayer. And I know there are some folks that, man, they can, I'm telling you, they can pray and they can pray long <laughs> and they can really make it big and beautiful, but this is a very simple prayer. Very simple. The meat of this prayer is very simple. I love the way he starts it with our Father. He says, Our. Our Father. I love that God is the God of all. Amen. God is the God, not just of America, but God of the world. God is not just the God of the black or God of the white. He's the God of all. He says, Our. And he says, Father. He says, Our Father. You know, there are over a hundred different names. It's taking me a little bit to relax here. You know, there are over a hundred different names for God. And my favorite is probably this one right here. Father. He's called, the, he's called Lord and Master, Messiah and Savior, the Almighty One. And it goes on and on and on. But the ones that I love the most is probably this one right here, Our Father. Our Father. My dad died April 13th, 2011. I love my dad. I love my father. I had a great relationship with my dad. I was very close with my dad. I have his name. I'm Donnie Jr. Pass it right on down to Donnie III. He better pass it down to Donnie IV. <laughs> but, but I had a very, very good relationship with him. And the Lord decided to take him early, 56 years old. He had liver failure and cirrhosis of the liver and hepatitis C. And he had a, a very difficult life, got in a horrible accident when he was 25. And had blood transfusion back in those days. Of course, they didn't screen blood the way they do now. And they caught this disease and, and he died. But I'm so glad as I think about my Heavenly Father that he'll always be my father. Always be my father. James 1.17 says this, But we have a Father, the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. My dad left. My dad changed. But there's no variableness with our Heavenly Father. And whenever we pray, whenever we stop and we think about what's going on in our culture, in our society, how it's shaken, how it's changing, May we never forget that we have a Father, our Father, 
that does not change, that does not turn. There's no shadow of turning upon Him. I praise the Lord we have a Father that cares about us. The word Father is mentioned six times in this passage. Did you catch it? Verse number 8, thy father, thy father. Verse number, uh, uh, verse number 6, thy father, thy father. Verse number 8, your father. Verse number 9, our father. Verse number 14, heavenly father. Verse number 15, your father. He, he mentions the word father six different times. And we all know if you study your Bible that the number 6 is a number for man. Isn't that amazing? He says, hey, I am your father. I'm the, I'm the father of all men. I'm not the father of the birds and the, and the sun and the moon and the water, all the things that I've created. I am your father. I'm glad that we have a heavenly father tonight. A heavenly father that knows all things, that is not concerned, that is not worried, that is not fretting, that has no fear, that cannot feel fear. I'm glad we have that kind of father that we can look up to. That kind of father. I've never doubted my father's love, and I've never doubted my father's intentions. May we never doubt our father's love, our heavenly father's love, our heavenly father's intention. May we have whole faith in him. When we pray, not just understand and remember we have a father who cares for us, but when we pray, pray for God's will over your own. Look at verse number 10, let me remind you. He says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Jesus says, Jesus says, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will, Thy kingdom, it's Thy name. Can I tell you, that's a very difficult thing for us to pray. I, am, I can be a very selfish Christian. I can tell you who I prayed for to win the election. Did anybody else pray with me? <laughs> yeah. Can I remind you that Jesus prayed? He says, Thy will be done. How many believe that Jesus is in control? How many believe God's in control? Our Heavenly Father's in control? Absolutely. He is. He is. Jesus said this. He prayed. He said, Lord, if it be Thy will, let this, this cup pass from me. And then He said, Not my will, but Thine be done. And we have prayed and we have sought and we have, we have begged and we have, we have looked and we have desired and can I tell you, sometimes God's will is not our own. So do we doubt the Lord? No. We do just what Jesus did. We acknowledge His sovereignty when He says, Thy kingdom come and Thy will be done. When we say, Lord Jesus, we desire Your kingdom. That means, Lord Jesus, uh, that means, Lord God, we want your reign. We want you to have control over what's going on in our world. That's what that means. We want you to be on the throne. We want you to control the circumstances and the situations that we find in our world. And let me tell you, He is. It may not look like it whenever we listen to the fake news, amen? When we listen to the liberal news, it may look like God is not in control and that the liberals are in control, but let me tell you, God is in control. God knows exactly what's going on. At a moment, at a moment, He can take whoever He wants right out of this thing. At a moment. He's done it before and He can do it again. I believe that. But sometimes when I pray... I don't believe that. Sometimes when I'm, I'm asking the Lord, 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 do you know what's going on here? Do you know what's going to happen? Do you, do you realize what this is going to do? Can I tell you, when we lose faith, we begin to fear. When we lose faith, we begin to fear. We need to pray God's will be done. Lord, you're in control of this thing and have faith in the Lord. It's common for children to ask for things. I have four kiddos, as you know, and often they'll ask me, because Pastor gave them the idea of this, to get ice cream after service. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. They'll ask, they'll say, they'll say hey, Dad, let's go get some ice cream. Sometimes I'll say yes, and sometimes I'll say no. I have one that all, he asked me for guns. That's all he wants. He just wants, he just wants guns. He just wants to go hunt and shoot stuff. Sometimes I'll say yes, and sometimes I'll say no. And sometimes they're okay with it, and sometimes I can tell they're not. Right? 
And it's the same way with our Lord. Sometimes we're okay with it and sometimes we're not. When God says no. But we need to be, we need to, we need to have the faith to trust the Lord. To understand that our eyes are very weak and very small. Our eyes are temporal. God has, a, God has a, the whole view. He has the eternal uh, um, plan within his, his mind and eyes. And I can tell you, we can't see what He can see. That helps me. When you pray, don't focus too far in the future. When you pray, don't focus too far in the future. Verse number 11 says this, Give us, what's the next two words? This day. Give us this day our daily bread. Don't focus too far in the future. How many of you have ever gone through something and you sit down and you pray and as you're praying, you're thinking about that thing and you become more fearful than what you were when you first started to pray? Yeah. I will think about something and... I'll try not to let it, let it bother me, and I'll pray and say, Lord, help me get over this thing. Let me get over this thing. Help me strengthen me here with this thing. And everything's good for a little while. And lo and behold, another thought will come into our minds. And that thought will lead to another thought. And if that thought happens, then guess what else is going to happen? That's going to happen, and then the whole world's going to be over! The whole thing's going to crash and burn! You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. May God help me. May God help me not to think too far in the future when I pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the bread that I have this day. God, I praise you for this day. For the help that you've given to me today. God, thank you that you're in control today. Because I can tell you the same God that's given to you today will be the same God that's going to give to you tomorrow. No doubt about it. God's in control. God's in control, but man is not. And the unknown is scary. And our minds and our imaginations will just add to the fear. I want to thank God for today because we aren't promised tomorrow. We cannot reach back into the yesterday, and we cannot reach forward into tomorrow. We have just today. The God who provided today will be the God to tomorrow, and our circumstances may change, but His character never will. His character never will. God will take care of us. How many of you have some pets? You have some pets? Yeah, I do, unfortunately. I have two dogs and a cat. I am sorry. Yes, I know, I know. We are not cat people, but apparently we are now. We found this cat. I was out, went out running one morning, and there was this cat underneath my truck. A kitten. It was a cute little kitten. Underneath my truck. My wife, you were still there. And I went, and I was running. I was looking around for any other kittens, any other than the mom of the cat. Didn't see anybody else, just a kitten. And I ran off, and I went running, and the whole time I was running, I was like, how am I going to get rid of this dumb cat? <laughs> and, you know, we, I, I went running, I came back, and the cat was gone, but my wife was gone as well. And I got thinking, my, cat, or my wife took that cat and maybe went to the branches or somebody that actually likes cats to give this cat to, but she didn't. And she came back without the cat, and I thought, hallelujah. Well, I was inside, and my son came and said, Dad, because I already told him there was a cat out there, and said, uh, Dad, the cat's back, and Mama's feeding it. I said, no, oh, no, I remember screaming, no. And uh, so now we have a cat. But the way that our, you know, the way our, our, our you know, situation is going in our world, the cat may be useful, Ms. young -Sung. Cat may be useful, but you know, you know, you know. Even though I don't like the cat, and I don't like one of the dogs, you know, honestly, I I take care of them. That's my whole point. I take care of the dogs, and I take care of the dumb cat. Because why? Because they're mine. They're ours. They're the McCulloughs, and I take care of them. 
even though, honestly, I don't really like them. And we see here the same thing with our Lord. You know, sometimes we can look at God, and I guarantee you there's t- sometimes that God doesn't like this guy right here. And they'll say, you are an idiot, son. Just like I look at that cat and I say, you are worthless. I guarantee you God probably does the same thing. He looks at us and He says, my word, how you have messed this up. But you know what? Because of the character of God, He cares for us. Because He loves us, in spite of ourself, He cares for us. And so if we care for our pets, don't you know we're going to care for our children? And don't you know the Lord, our Heavenly Father, is going to do the exact same thing? Focusing on the future will rob you of today's blessing. I have a boy named Emery. I love Mr. Emery. He's over in the back. But you cannot tell Emery anything. Like, hey, son, there's a, you know, you're going to be going over to somebody, so-and-so's house come Saturday. Or, hey, buddy, we're going to go hunting this Saturday. Or, hey, buddy, you know, next week we're going to do this fun thing. Because every day, every hour, on the hour, he's going to come and he's going to say, Hey, Dad, how long until we go to so-and-so? When do we go to this place? When do we go to that thing? And he will drive you absolutely nuts. He will. And the problem with that is that he focuses on the future so much that he will neglect everything going on today. Anybody got any youngins like that? Maybe you're like that. That you'll think so much about what's going to happen or what might happen that you neglect what you have today. We cannot focus about the future so far that we neglect what we have today because it will rob the blessings. When we pray, get right with God. Look at verse number 12. He says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. When we pray, when we go to the Lord in prayer, instead of maybe focusing on everything that's happening out here, maybe we ought to focus on what's happening right here. Maybe we, ought to, maybe we ought to look a little closer on the inside than looking on the outside. Maybe if we examine and say, Lord, Lord God, is the problem me? Lord, is the problem me? Is it that I need revival? Is it that my love is not, is not as strong as what it once was? Maybe instead of looking at the world's problems, we look at our problems. And we get right with the Lord. May have we spent more time seeking repentance in our prayers than we do seeking rewards, God would do something. Martin Luther said this, keep short accounts with God. You know what that means? Hey, when we pray, hey, don't let anything reside on the inside that's going to hinder the blessing of God. Keep short accounts with God. We cannot have strong earthly relationships when our spiritual relationships with God is weak. Number five, ask God for direction in life and victory over sin. Verse number 13 says this, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now whenever you look at that verse, to be honest with you, that verse, it seems like God, you know, would lead us to tempt us. Doesn't it sound like that? Let me read it to you again. And Jesus is saying, hey, this is the way you should pray. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It sounds like This verse is saying God would lead you to tempt you. How many of you know that is not right? Say amen. That's right. We know that is not right. Why? Because if we compare Scripture with Scripture, we see that's correct. And whenever there's a question, we find something, we're not sure in God's Word, let me encourage you, continue reading. Continue searching. Compare Scripture with Scripture. That would help a lot of us with our error in doctrine. James 1 verse 13 says this, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Now here's the thing, God cannot tempt us with sin, the Bible says, but God can test us. God will test you. But the devil will tempt you. God is going to test you to make you stronger, but the devil is going to tempt you to make you weaker. 
There's a, a big difference. And the devil is going to tempt you to get our eyes off the Lord and get our eyes on our circumstances, get our eyes on this world instead of our, of our Heavenly Father and what's going on in heaven and what God wants us to do here on this earth. And we're going to get our eyes off of what God wants us to do. And we're going to be tempted to lose our faith. We're going to be tempted to gripe and complain. We're going to be, we're going to be tempted to, to lose faith and to fret and to, and to be anxious instead of putting our faith and trust in the Lord. Maybe it's God t- testing us. Maybe He wants to strengthen us. Maybe He wants to say, Hey, Peter, won't you get on out in the boat? Won't you try me? Won't you test me? Won't you take a step out and see if I will not answer thee? Maybe God's doing that to me. Maybe God's doing that to you. He will. He'll test you. He'll test you to strengthen you. What we need to do is ask God's help and God's Holy Spirit conviction to true holiness. David said this, Psalm 19 verse 13 says, Keep back thy servant from presumptuous sin. David was saying, Lord, help me stay right with thee. Say me, help me to be right with you. What is David saying? He's saying, Lord, help me look inside. May there be an inward look instead of an outward look. God, help me to be right with you. I want to encourage you. I would encourage you, don't pray anymore about what's going on out here in our stupid world. Don't pray anymore about that. How about let's pray about God working in our hearts. Why don't we get serious and spend, spend that time instead of fretting, instead of worrying, instead of wasting our, our, our time on that mess, why don't we pray, Lord, help us. Lord, help us me. Lord, help me grow closer to you through this time. Lord, use this in my life to bring revival in my heart, in my soul, in my family. Why don't we do that? Why don't we use that time? May God help us. Can I tell you, this world, this world is going to burn. This world is going to fail. There is, there, there is, no, there is no future for this world. But I'm glad every Christian has a future. May God help us. Lastly, number six, in your prayer with praise and confidence. I love how the Lord Jesus begins the prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know the word hallowed means? It means to sanctify. It means to glorify. He exalts. He says, Lord, I exalt your name. Catch it. Exalt your name. Your name. Just your name. Deserves honor and glory and praise. Just your, not you, who you are, but just your name deserves that. He says, hallowed, glory, praise your name. And then he ends the prayer with praise as well. You catch it. He says this, for thine, the last part of 13, for thine is the kingdom, yours is the kingdom. Lord, this is yours, he says. This is yours. And he says, and the power, the power is yours. And the glory, the glory is yours. End our prayers with praise. Just like, just like two little bookshelves, you know. It starts, with prayer and it, end, or it starts with praise and it ends with praise. Praising the Lord for who He is. How many of you can say, Lord, we know that God is in control. Say amen. 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 Sometimes we have to remind ourselves that God is in control. Sometimes we have to remind ourselves that the Lord has got all this in control. Often we end our prayers with unbelief. Often we'll end our prayers with fear and fret. Often we won't even end our prayer because we get sidetracked with fear. But Jesus concludes with great confidence in a great God. He says, you have total reign. You have total power. And you deserve total glory. And what's the next word? Forever. Forever. That's eternal. That's eternal. Matthew Henry said this, Praise is the work and happiness of heaven. And all that would go to heaven hereafter must begin their heaven now. How many of you know in heaven we're going to be praising the Lord? Yeah. He says, hey, if you're going to heaven, then you need to be praising the Lord right now. Absolutely. We're going to be praising the Lord forever, Brother Mark. (laughs) We're going to be praising the Lord forever. We ought to start praising Him now. Let our praises outweigh our petitions. 
Let our praises outweigh our petitions ten to one. Why? It's not because God needs them. It's because He deserves them. God deserves our praise. He's our Father. Our Father who loves us and is going to take care of us, who's going to provide for us. And He certainly deserves our praise. No doubt about it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank You. Lord, I thank You for who You are. Lord, I thank You for Your name. Lord, of all the names. Lord, You're my daddy. You're my father. And Lord, just, just to be able to call You Father. Lord, it can be overwhelming when I think about it. Lord, how I can be a part of You, being the sinner that I am. Lord, how I can be part of the family of God. Lord, I praise You and I thank You. And Lord, we must ask for forgiveness. Lord, for we are very weak. Lord, I pray You will help us. Lord, help us to not look. Lord, help us not to look at our circumstances. Lord, not look at our society. Lord, not look at all the foolishness that's around us, Father. Help us, Lord, to look in. Lord, help us to look in and help us to look up. For You are a great and mighty God. Lord, there's no one greater than You. All glory belongs to You. All power belongs to You. Father, we look to You for help. Lord, we look to do Your will. And Father, we know that Your will is to have faith in You, trust in You, and to praise You. Lord, to walk every day with faith, every day in obedience Lord, to Your Word. Lord, I thank You. Lord, for allowing me to take Your Word. Lord, these are Your words. And to be able to share them with Your people. And I pray You'll help me. And help us. Lord, to pray very simply. Very sincerely. Lord, to seek You to praise You. Lord, to get our eyes off of everything, to get our eyes on You. Lord, if there is someone listening to me, Lord, they can't say that You are their Father. Lord, I pray they will understand. Lord, that You died for them to give them eternal life. Lord, to be their Father, their Savior, their Lord. God, I pray... Lord, they would be saved today. Lord, understand that You love them. You died for them. Lord, You'll give them eternal life in heaven as well. Lord, help us to live in Your victory. Lord, help Your people here, Your church. God, may we experience true Holy Ghost sent revival in our hearts, in our lives, in our home, in our church. God, may You not give us a spirit of fear. Lord, how we need You. Maybe you're here tonight and you're listening and maybe some of the words that were said, God, use in your heart. Maybe you're experiencing something right now like me where I can get discouraged. I can lose sight of what's important or who's in control. And you'd like to come pray. I'm going to ask Miss Amy if she would play for a little bit. If you'd like to come, I'm going to encourage you to stand to your feet. If you'd like to come to the altar and pray, the altar is open for you. Let me encourage you to pray as Jesus showed us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Glory to 
His name. God is in control. May we thank God for the day that He's given to us. For tomorrow is not promised. But Lord, with Your help, we'll live it for You.